In this video, we'll talk about the frequency response of electrical circuits. Simply speaking, the frequency response of a system is simply the effect, as a function of frequency, that a system has on the magnitude and phase of a signal that's applied to it. Keep in mind that since we're working in the frequency domain, the only valid signals that we can use are sinusoids. It can be easy to forget this, since the, this viewpoint of a circuit is so useful that it's often generalized to signals which are, strictly speaking, not purely sinusoidal. The mathematics as to why it's sometimes okay to make this generalization are beyond the scope of this course, so we'll content ourselves with working with sinusoidal signals. As usual in our lab videos, we'll de-emphasize the mathematics associated with these topics. The math is presented in all its tedious glory in the textbook and the lecture videos. Our goal here is to do some experiments to get some physical insight into what's going on. First, let's do a really brief overview on what a frequency response is. A system's frequency response is simply the relationship between the input of the system and the output sinusoids. It characterizes the effect that the system has on an input sinusoid as a function of frequency. The frequency response, h of j omega, is a complex function of frequency. The frequency response consists of two parts, a magnitude response, relating the magnitudes of the input and output signals, and a phase response, which relates the phases of the input and output sinusoids. The magnitude of the output signal is simply the magnitude of the input signal times the magnitude response of the system. And the phase of the output signal is simply the phase of the input signal plus the phase angle induced by the system. As an example, let's take a really superficial look at the magnitude response of an RC circuit. Here's the circuit we're interested in. The input is an applied voltage at these terminals, and our output is the voltage across the capacitor. If we convert the circuit to the frequency domain, we can represent the circuit elements as by their impedances, and the voltages by their phasors. This circuit then becomes a simple voltage divider. If we apply our voltage divider formula and look only at the relationship between the input and output magnitudes, we get the magnitude response shown here. We'll just look at the limiting cases of the effects of this magnitude response at low and high frequencies. If the input frequency is much less than 1, than one over r times c, the output amplitude is almost the same as the input amplitude. However, if we apply a signal whose frequency is much higher than 1 over r times c, the output amplitude is approximately zero. This circuit is behaving like a low-pass filter. It's passing low-frequency signals and stopping high-frequency signals. Now let's take a look at how we can use this behavior to our advantage. Suppose that we're measuring a fairly low-frequency sinusoidal signal. Unfortunately, when we measure this signal, we get some high-frequency noise associated with it. We want to remove this noise so that we can get a better feeling for what the original signal that we wanted to measure actually is. What we can do is apply this signal as the input to the circuit we showed on the previous slide. If we then measure the capacitor voltage, we should see a cleaned up version of this waveform with the high frequency noise component reduced or eliminated. What we'll need to do is just make sure that 1 over r times c for the RC circuit is above the frequency of this low frequency sinusoid and well below the frequency of the noise that we want to eliminate. For our example of an implemented circuit, we need to define a few things. Our noisy signal is going to be applied by the analog discovery waveform generator. Mathematically, the signal we'll use is shown here. The 1 kilohertz component is our original sinusoid that we want to measure, and this 30 kilohertz sinusoid is representing our noise. Here's the circuit I'm going to use to filter out the noise. I'm using a 0.1 microfarad capacitor and a 1 kilo ohm resistor. This combination makes 1 over RC to be 1,591 times 2 pi, or 1,591 hertz. Please note that we need to work in radians per second when calculating the circuit's cutoff frequency. Trying to make 1 over RC to be a number in hertz is a common mistake. Here's our circuit. This is our 1 microfarad capacitor and our resistor. We're applying our noisy signal with channel 1 of the waveform generator, ground is here. We're using channel 1 of the oscilloscope to measure our applied waveform. We'll use channel 2 of the oscilloscope to measure the filtered waveform, the voltage across the capacitor. The main new thing about this lab is probably setting up the waveform generator to create a signal with multiple frequency components. I'll do this by creating a mathematical representation of the signal using the waveform generator. Under the basic tab, select custom. Click on edit 
to create a custom signal. This dialog box should open. Click on the Math tab to create a mathematical representation of a signal. The math function is based on a definition of a normalized horizontal axis, x. We need to select a range of x. I'll stick with the default range of 0 to 1. Now our definition of the signal is based on this range of independent variable, which will eventually become time when we play the signal back. Enter the mathematical representation of the signal in this box. I want one period of the low-frequency sinusoid to be in the range 0 less than x less than 1. That component of the signal will be 2 times pi times x. The noise signal is at a frequency of 30 times this, so its comp contribution will be sine of 60 times pi times x. To see the signal I'm creating, click on Generate Math. At the moment, the amplitude of the signal is very small since the vertical axis is normalized over a range of 100%. We want the low frequency component to be three times the amplitude of the high frequency component, so let's multiply the low frequency component by 75% and the high frequency component times 25%. Regenerating the math, we get this signal. To make the signal available for playback, click and Save as New. An icon appears on the waveform generator showing the signal. We'll normalize the frequency up to 1 kilohertz, apply a 4 volt amplitude, click on 1 to apply the signal. Now going to our oscilloscope, clicking on run. The yellow line is our noisy signal. The blue line is our filtered version. Our signal is cleaned up considerably.